Lord. Amen. We are welcome in Jesus' name. And we pray in the name of Jesus. His name will be glorified in our lives in Jesus' name. Praise God. Yeah, I thank God for the privilege and the blessing that God gave me to be able to travel to convention. Uh, I pray that uh, God will bless those individuals that made it happen. Some few people in the church uh, contributed money for me to get the ticket to go. And I pray the Lord will bless them in Jesus' name. And then number two, I was able to go with my son which was uh, the first of his, maybe the first time we travel alone for a long time. I was a bit uncomfortable with it, praise the Lord, but we thank God that everything went very well. We praise the Lord uh, because I wasn't too sure whether we'd be used to the system where we went to, but even though things that we don't expect to happen still happen, but his uh, attitude towards it was a very positive one. So I thank God for that in Jesus' name. In fact, we came back this morning, and I was telling him on the way that, wow, he's nice hanging out with you. I said, I hope we do it next time. Praise the Lord. He didn't give the answer. I just laughed. But it is well in Jesus' name. But the Congress was a, sorry, the convention was a great one, and the word, too, was very powerful. And there's a lot of message uh, from the general of us here to us, which maybe we will discuss during our workers' meeting. And I know it will bless us all in Jesus' name. Before we go into the world, I just want us to pray for our children that, uh, that had their birthday during the week. Nancy, where are you? Where are thou? Where's your boy? And we need to tell the parents, oh, you know, if there's cake now, we will have remembered. If there's cake, you will have remembered. We just want to pray for you, okay? How are you? Let's sing for them first. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear brethren. Happy birthday to you. Can we just stretch our hands towards them? that God will give them a perfect jubilee. Let's pray for them. Let's prophesy good things into their lives, that these children will be joy to their parents. They will be joy to their parents. They shall be greater than their parents. They shall excel in this land. They shall do well in this land. They shall be like the sons of Obedidon, who are great men in everywhere you put them. They shall be like Manasseh and Ephraim to their generations. Father, that people will be praying and be using their name as reference point for blessing in the name of Jesus. We pray that they shall be filled with spirit. They will stand out like Daniel among the others. They will stand out in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you for this, your children. You say, children are the heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. Father, we thank you for blessing us with these children, for also keeping them alive. We thank you in Jesus' name. We know that you have brought them into this world for a purpose. I pray that that purpose will be accomplished in Jesus' name. We prophesy into the life of, we are not saying email. We prophesy into the life of these children that we say in the name of Jesus, they shall be greater than their parents. They shall be greater than their parents. Like Daniel, they will excel ten times more than their colleagues in the name of Jesus. You will give them the wisdom of Solomon in the name of Jesus. They shall, they shall have the strength of David to overcome every Goliath of this land in the name of Jesus. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. Next year, it shall be greater and more glorious. The Lord will keep you. We will never regret over you in Jesus' name. Every time we remember you, it shall be with joy. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. God bless you. Happy birthday. Well done. Let's clap for them as they go back to their seats. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Can we rise up on our feet? I am rejoicing. My name has been written 
is an old time song. I am rejoicing for I am born again. Does anybody still live that song? I am rejoicing. My name has been written. I am rejoicing for I am born again. I am born again. I am rejoicing. My name has been written. I am rejoicing. I am rejoicing for I am born again. Can we just thank God that we are born again? Let's thank Him. How our life was before we met Christ. Let's thank Him. Let's rejoice. Let's rejoice. Let's rejoice. Let's thank Him. How our life used to be and now how it is when we met Christ. The great change that took place. I want to thank Him. Let's worship Him. Let's glorify Him. In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to also pray. You know, there was a man that his servant was sick, a centurion. And they told, told Jesus, pray. And Jesus was coming. The man said, no, I don't want you to come. I just want you to release a word. So I want to say, Father, speak a word to me today. Let me hear a word. All I need is a word from you. Can we just pray? Just stop from your heart. Pray this prayer. Pray that, God, I need a word. I need a word right now. I need a word now. I need a word from heaven. Speak to me, Lord, today. From the word of today, Father, let me hear something. Let, let a rhema come for me. Let a rhema come for me. We thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. The entrance of your word bringeth wisdom and understanding to the simple. We ask, let your word come with power. Let it come with precision. Let it come with authority. Let me speak like an oracle of God in the name of Jesus. Let your word, wherever it goes, let it bring healing. Let it bring restoration. Let it bring new beginning. Let it bring salvation. Let it bring deliverance. Let it bring answers to questions. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can we sit down, please? I don't know. It's something wrong. It's like you give good quality, then low again. Can we make it stable and good? Can we open our Bible to Jeremiah 29, verse 10? Jeremiah 29, verse 10. Jeremiah 29, verse 10. It said, For thus said the Lord, that after 70 years, be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you in causing you to return to this place. Hallelujah. You know, this August, our church, Redeemed Christian Church of God, turned 70. The church has been existing since 1952 and the church was 70 years this season and the theme for that conference was perfect jubilee you know i was there but before i went i thought i was like what i thought 50 is jubilee but he said perfect jubilee and then this word came god said after 70 years god said i will visit you he said, after 70 years, whatever you be know, they were in captivity in Babylon. But God said, don't worry, just go through what you are going through. Give birth, get married, do everything. But in 70 years, I will give you perfect jubilee. He said, I will visit you. I will perform my good works towards you. I pray that in this season, the Lord will visit you in Jesus' name. In this season, the Lord will perform his work to us in Jesus' name. The Lord will visit you in the name of Jesus. I don't know whether you have received a word before. Ten years, two years, <coughs> two weeks, two months. And it looks like the word is not coming to pass. 
I'm here to announce to you, this is your season of perfect jubilee. The Lord will fulfill it in Jesus' name. The Lord will visit you in the name of Jesus. He will perform his work towards you in Jesus' name. And, you know, in a very ironic way, we declare this month the month of new things. Do we remember that? I didn't know all these things because what we were told in that convention is that, okay, Lord, the t title of today's sermon is Perfect Jubilee, Perfect Beginning. Perfect Jubilee, Perfect Beginning. Can we say amen to that? Amen. You know, our, our Geo told us something. He said, Perfect Jubilee means consists of two things. And the two things are restoration and new beginning. They are restoration and new beginning. And this month in Jesus Connections, our word was new things, which is also new beginning. That the Lord will do new things for you in Jesus' name. God does not speak more than what I'm saying. We have started doing this in the beginning of this month. Our Father in the Lord is also saying the same thing. And I'm convinced that the Lord wants to do new things for some people. And I pray it shall be you in Jesus' name. I say it shall be you in Jesus' name. Our church is in the season of perfect jubilee. It's in the season in the 70th year of his existence. And the word for the season is jubilee. You know, when we were in the conference, convention, they were, when they were singing that song in uh, the local language, you know, when they say jubilee, they will say founder's years. That is the beginning of what, how it's supposed to be in the original. I pray in the name of Jesus, anything in your life that has taken a bad turn, it will go back to the original God put it in Jesus' name. It will go back to the original God put it in Jesus' name. Whenever they wanted to say Jubilee in that language, they will say founder's years. That is, you are going back to how God did it. The founder did it. And I decree into your life that everything God has promised you, it will come to pass in Jesus' name. God said he will visit God said he will perform his word. And I will pray, I prophesy to your life that that word will be performed in Jesus' name. In Daniel chapter 9, verse 2, he said, In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that it will accomplish 70 years in the desolation. So, Daniel discovered by the books that God has said in the 70th year, I am bringing jubilee to you. I say in the name of Jesus, this is your year of jubilee in Jesus' name. This is your year of jubilee in Jesus' name. That promise that God has given you in this season to come to pass in Jesus' name. If you believe it, say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. In the year of perfect jubilee, God will restore everything that you have lost. You know, I said, it's restoration and new beginning. Joel 2.25. I don't know what you have lost. I don't know what you have mistakenly or carelessly or foolishly you have lost. God said restoration is your turn now. I said restoration is your turn. The Lord will restore you in Jesus' name. The Lord will restore you in Jesus' name. Job 22, 25, he said I will restore to you all the years the locusts, cacaon, and caterpillar have eaten. He said he will give it back to you. And I decree in the name of Jesus to come back to you in Jesus' name. I say to come back to you in the name of Jesus. In Isaiah 61 verse 7. Isaiah 61 verse 7. He said he will give you double for your trouble. I pray in the name of Jesus. Anyone that has been delayed, denied. In the name of Jesus for your trouble. You have double honor in Jesus' name. 
You have double honor in the name of Jesus. He said, for your shame, you shall have double. For your confusion, they shall receive rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their life, they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be their portion. In the name of Jesus, double is your portion in Jesus' name. Double is your portion in the name of Jesus. Double is your portion in the name of Jesus. Double is your portion in Jesus' name. Double. Not just one restoration. is talking about double restoration. In the year of Jubilee, perfect Jubilee, God will attack those that have been oppressing you. Those that have been saying you cannot go forward. Whatever is the interest that has been limiting you, God will attack it. And I say in the name of Jehovah, whatever it is, whether immigration, whether health, whether money, the Lord will attack them all in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jeremiah 25, 12, he, he, can you still see? He said, it shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished. I will punish the king of Babylon and the nation that said, uh, uh, said the Lord for their iniquity and the land of the chariot, and I will make it a perpetual desolation. Every king of Babylon oppressing your life. I say in the name of your God, we punish them in Jesus' name. Yeah. Because you are in the year of perfect jubilee, the Lord will punish them in Jesus' name. The Lord will punish them in Jesus' name. If you believe in say it three times, Amen, Amen, Amen. Like I said, they said it consists of two things. Number one, new beginning. And they told us, new beginning means that you have missed an opportunity. You have missed a chance. And God is giving you a brand new chance. You have gone for maybe two years off the track, but God is now putting you at the starting race to start again. And I pray in the name of Jesus, if you have missed your way, God is taking you to the new beginning in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I said the title is Perfect Jubilee, Perfect Beginning. Some people, they have, they have gone too deep into whatever they are into, and they are thinking, there is no way out for me. Or there is no, ah, I, it can't be possible. Time has gone on me. I say in the name of Jesus, you have a new beginning in Jesus' name. I say you have a new beginning in Jesus' name. In Isaiah 43, 19, Isaiah 43, 19. God said, I will do a new thing. I'm begging us, let us trust God. Tell your neighbor, say, please, I'm begging you, trust God. Don't trust yourself. Say, tell that person, say, don't trust yourself. Say, just trust God. You know, I was sharing testimony before. The guy is a Muslim. He just, are you a pastor? And when he said, yeah, I said, pray. My daughter is in hospital now. They said they are going to do operation. I trusted God. I, I felt fear, but I chose to trust God. I said, sir, once we prayed, don't, don't, because they were calling him, and he was trying to, you know, he himself was panicking. I said, sir, you have to stop this. Just as time you have prayed, just tell them she, they should continue. That will give good news very shortly. By faith, and God answered. And I'm decreeing over your life today. The Lord will do a new thing in Jesus' name. In Isaiah 43, 19, he said, Behold, that is look, I will do a new thing. You have to look away from your past. Verse 18, he said, Remember you know the former things. Neither consider the things of old. You are thinking about your failure. You are thinking about the mistake you have done. But God is saying, look, say look, 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 look. You see, the way we are saying it, we are not sure about it. He said, I will do a new thing. Say, in my life, God will do a new thing. Say, God will do a new thing. Say, I believe it. Say, I believe it. I receive it. God will do a new thing. I don't care what my body is telling me. I don't care what my bank account is telling me. I don't care what the court is telling me. I don't care what anybody is telling me. I believe the Lord. God said, I will do a new thing. You have a new thing testimonies. I say you have to new thing in Jesus' name. 
When we're talking about new things, it is like you have missed it. You have gone out the road. Maybe you are going the right way, but along the line you missed the way and started going. It's just like I'm going to Florunda. I started going in the direction of Isige. And it may be a nice thing that you are going, but you may not reach where they play your destination. You need to go in the direction of Florunda to be able to get to Florunda. I pray the Lord will get you there in Jesus' name. The Lord will get you there in Jesus' name. So God said, ah, you, will, you will do a new thing. For God to help us in this season, we have to go to the beginning. We have to go to the beginning. We have to start from the beginning. And this is that season. You know, in Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. God was talking to the Ephesians church. They were doing everything. They were doing everything that what they were supposed to do. But Bible said they missed just one thing. And what did God ask them to do in verse 5? He said, verse 5, what did he say? He said, they should go to the beginning. He said, remember where thou hast fallen. Repent and do the first works. So in this season, you must go back to the beginning of your love for God. I pray the Lord will give you in Jesus' name. That love will be activated in Jesus' name. I say it will be activated in Jesus' name. It will be activated in Jesus' name. So we need to go back to where we have missed out on the love of God. We have to go back to the beginning. Those people were doing everything, but along the line, ego and everything slipping, and they started deviating. Even though they are still doing the work, but the main thing that's supposed to be propelling the thing, which is love, was gone. Church, we need to go back to the love of God. Everything you do today now, is there love of God in it? When you, you, you sweep in church, you do you do it by love of God? When you sing, do you do it by love of God? When you do usher, do you do it by love of God? When they say, come and join, I say, so you come to pray, do you do it by love of God? Because if you are not, you need to go back to the beginning. And the Lord will take you there in Jesus' name. Amen. I said, the Lord will take you there in Jesus' name. You know, another thing I need to say is that before God does things, he usually say it ahead. He only speak it ahead. He says it ahead. Because I may be talking now, you might say, what is this guy saying? But I'm telling you what God wants to do in your life. In Isaiah 42, verse 9, he said, Behold, the former things have come to pass. New things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Former things, I know you failed. You have made mess. You have disappointed your family. You have even disappointed God. But God said you want to do a new thing. Say, can we say new thing for me? Can we say new thing for me? If there's anything I'm here to tell us today, God wants a new beginning. God wants a new beginning. And when the new beginning starts, you begin to see new results too. And it's not hard. The Holy Spirit will take us there in Jesus' name. I say, Holy Spirit will take you there in Jesus' name. I say, the Holy Spirit will take you there in Jesus' name. Amen. God said, before I do it, I will speak it. And God is saying, he wants to do new things. In fact, God is also saying, write it down. Write it down that he wants to do a new thing. Revelation 21 verse 5. 4 and 5, sorry. Revelation chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. It said, God said he will wipe out all tears. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. Neither shall any more pain. For former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Write it down. Can you write it down? At least if you have no writing sermon, which is very bad, but write this one down, that God will do a new thing for you. Obey God for once. Write it down. Write it somewhere. On your mobile, you can write it. Write it down. God said he will do a new thing. If there's any message that God is telling me, is that new beginning must start. He said, write it down. 
Look and write it down. When new things begin, old things will be forgotten. When new things begin, old things will be forgotten. Many people are stuck in the old things. Ah, you don't know what happened. Pastor, you don't understand. I don't want to understand. I, what I want to know is God said he will do a new thing. When all new things begin, all things will be forgotten. Isaiah 65, 17. It said, for behold, I create new heaven and new earth. And the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. All things must go. Your focus should be on new things. Oh, you don't know my wife. You don't know how my husband is. That is all things. You just see, ah, this is the best husband I've ever had in my life. This is the best wife. What happened? That will be your portion in Jesus' name. I said, that will be your portion in Jesus' name. He said, I will crew. He said, that's why Isaiah 43, 18. He said, remember, you know, the former things. Neither consider the things of old. I want us to also know, continually thinking about the old things is like backsliding. Continually thinking about old things. We can write that Jeremiah 31, 22. Continually thinking about the old things is like you are backsliding. When God says, I will do a new thing, you are trying to convince God that can't you see what I'm going through. God said, forget them. I will do new things. Say, I received the new things. I received the new beginning. In Jesus' name. Amen. How was it in the beginning? How was it? Let, me, let us even ask ourselves in the church. How was it when you became Christian? How was it in your beginning? At least as a pastor in this, this church, if you want to go, how was it in the beginning of your relationship with God? When you marry your wife, you marry your husband. Do you know how that love was? You cannot sleep. You cannot, you're always in love, in love, in love. But today now, things has happened. Your marriage, you go to the beginning in Jesus' name. I say, your marriage, you go to the new beginning in Jesus' name. Then your marriage, you go to the beginning, God has ordained in Jesus' name. We were talking last month. He said, it was not so in the beginning. But men started inventing their own things, inventing their own ideas, inventing their own cultures. And that's why we're having problems. By saying the name of Jesus, we are going to the beginning in Jesus' name. Let me give us an example. As a pastor in Jesus Connections, we used to pray a lot in those days. We used to pray a lot. We pray about everything and anything. And we saw God do many things. In this church, a woman went for a fibroid operation. And we prayed. And when he got to the operating table, they look at the fibroid, the fibroid was not there. In Jesus' connection, not another church. There was a woman, they told her she would not give birth. Not that, they, that she should not get pregnant, she would die. They put something to block her from getting pregnant. And I don't know what happened, she got pregnant. Whatever was supposed to block was still there, but she got pregnant with it. So they had to remove it, and they were giving her bad news. After three weeks, blood started flowing. To call long story short, that woman gave birth. In fact, a week to giving birth, they told her, they admitted her into hospital because they said this is a major delivery operation they are going to do. A day to the operation, God decided to take the baby out by himself. Amen. That woman went on to have about two other children. Amen. I say in the name of Jesus, we will do it in Jesus' name. Amen. I mean, we, we're in this church, we see people. People, not one, not two, with serious immigration issue. Serious immigration issue. And we prayed. And God, among many people, these our people were one of them. They were one of them. 
I remember that day. We, 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 we came to church that day. We were just praising God. No preaching. No preaching. From beginning to the end of the service that day. We just started dancing, thanking God. We are dancing. There was one woman that was invited. She didn't want to dance. She was just standing. When she saw the way we were dancing, she didn't know when she... In fact, our own was even different from our own dance. Praise the Lord. We, I asked her after. I said, ah. He said she couldn't. She felt out of place. See, she just said, let me just join them. And then when she joined, she just started her own. I pray in the name of that joy will come into your life in Jesus' name. In those days, we used to pray. But today, people are busy. In the beginning, we used to pray. Today, when we call for prayer, prayers, how many of us do come? Tell your neighbor, say, go to the beginning. Say, let's go to the beginning. In those days, people used to attend Bible study. People used to attend Bible study. Because in those days, Many, many people don't even have Bible. They used to come to church. We have some Bibles we put by the entrance. They pick it, use it. After service, they drop it and go. That's how they were doing in Jesus' connection, not another church. But God help us to stop that. People now buy Bibles today. People buy study Bible. People buy things. That's how people were passionate about the word of God in the beginning. In the beginning, people were very passionate. But today, people are busy. They are too busy to attend Bible study. Am I right? I'm not seeing smile. I don't, I'm not seeing confirmation again. What happened? Or am I lying? In, those, in the beginning, we used to attend Bible study. In fact, I'm constantly kept busy. I remember I have different groups that I am doing Bible study for. I, I used to, this group, that group, that group, I'm doing Bible study with them. But now, all of them, I'm the one running after them, they don't have time for me again. But I told you it's one of them, and it's even disturbing now in the service. If you see how many times I've dragged him, dragged him, I will say, let's start this year, 2021, let's start. By Jamash 2021, it has stopped. They won't come again. You too, you are one of them. But I equate. Maybe they will go to the beginning. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, say, let us go to the beginning. In the beginning, ah, people were passionate about the word of God. They come to Bible study. But today, people now know more Bible than God. They don't need Bible study again. Because they've known some few scriptures here and there. They don't have time again. What, what does he want to say that I don't know? Me too, I have concordance. I have uh, study Bible. I have Bible dictionary. What do you have? It doesn't work like that. So praise the Lord. The more you think you know Bible, the more you discover you don't know anything at all. I mean, I will, I will go to some meetings, maybe like General Vasey or my, uh, my pastor, my father in the Lord, he will be sharing scripture that I've read more than 50 times. And uh, he will be bringing out his hands. Ah, are we not reading the same Bible? And when you say you've known something, and then you, what happened to this one? Whoever do you stop it? Or... May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. That was in the beginning. But today, people, people used to discipline the flesh in those days. People used to discipline the flesh. But today, now, they give the flesh what the flesh wants. I remember in those days, there were some sisters. They would come to church. They dress anyhow. And I would call them, my sister, you can't do this in the house of God. You are a child. You are an ambassador. Don't do it. Some people used to go to, I mean, that one of our biggest problems in the beginning was people go to disco on Friday, on Saturday. They don't come to church on Sunday. But because of encounter with God, they change. But today now, whatever the flesh wants, the flesh gets. They dress like them. They dance like them. They talk like them. They swear like them. A few. Am I still talking? Because the quietness is getting me uncomfortable now. Praise the Lord. 
Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9 27, I want us to read it together. 1 Corinthians 9 27. He said, But I keep under my uh, ready go, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. He said, Oh, we, we have freedom in the flesh. Somebody, I hey, hate that is religion. First Corinthians 6 12. Paul said, All things are lawful. All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Why should you be exposing your breasts? Why? Why? Why should you be a man and be wearing your ring? Are you a woman? Are you a man product? Well, what is the fashion in that? Paul said he keeps his body. All things are lawful unto me, but not all things are speedy. All things are lawful, but not all things will, uh, will, uh, I, I will not be brought under the power of any. Yeah, I am free. But God said, not all these things are speedy. They are not, they are not, not, they are not helpful. First Corinthians 10, 12. I hope I'm right. First Corinthians 10, 12. No, let me. That's not the one. We say the same thing that all things are. I'm coming. I will find it. Okay. Is it 13? Okay, don't worry. I will find it and let us know. I will, I will find it and, and let us know. Praise the Lord. It, you know, Paul said he disciplined himself. If you read that chapter 9, there are many things he was entitled to. But because of the cross, he denied himself. In fact, Paul told us that meat, because they had that problem, most of the meat they were eating, they said they've gone through idols. They are, most of them are from idols. And Paul said, I can eat it. I can eat it. So far, I bless it. I pray upon it. I can eat it. In fact, he said, if you go to a place, they give you meat. Don't start asking them whether it's from idol or from this. But Paul now said something. He said, but if somebody come to you, a boss, somebody say, ah, this meat is from idol. He said, I will not eat it. Not because of any other thing, because I don't want that brother or sister to fall. But today now nobody is ready to sacrifice anything for God. Nobody is ready to give up anything for God. I pray in the name of Jesus, we will go to the beginning in Jesus' name. I mean, I can just call somebody in those days. The way you are dressing, please don't do it again. And they will change. You go to disco. I will go to some people's living room. I will see them decorate their sitting room with uh, all manners of whiskeys. So, please, this thing, let it go. But today now, uh-huh, uh-huh, what's your business? Did Jesus not turn water into wine? That's what they were telling me. We don't know the one Jesus turned to or what happened, Jesus turned to one. But what we are telling you, all things may be, may be lawful, but not all things are expedient. We are now, we are not like them. We talk like them. We dress like them. We do everything they do. And we say we want to win them. How can we win them? They are the one winning us. And I say in the name of Jesus, those power will break in your life in Jesus' name. What should we do? I could go on and on and on. In the beginning, in the beginning, I, I remember in those days, I have different groups of people I do Bible study with. They are, they are always running after me, begging me. I will be saying, oh, I don't have time, I don't have time. But today, now I'm the one running after them, begging them. But I'm going to start again, praise the Lord. And if you don't answer, I will just say in the beginning, uh, sorry, in the beginning, You must answer by force, so praise the Lord. Yeah. 
in the beginning, in the beginning. What do we do? What do we do? In Revelation uh, 2, verse 5, he said, repent. He said, repent. Is that not what he says? He said, repent. What does repent mean? What we need to do if we want to go to the beginning, the beginning God created, the beginning that we had before, that we are missing. With the beginning whereby we now, we do prayer. Many people don't come. People are too busy. People don't, they are not busy to go to a patio. They are not busy to go to, they will, they, they will say they are sick, they will not come to church, but they, they, no matter how much they are sick, they will go to work. Some people say, why did you come to church? You know, as I was about to leave, so some visitors came. That's why. Pastor, I'm sorry. And they expect the pastor to accept. Will you, when you are going to work, visitor come. Will you not tell the visitor, I'm sorry, come back next time? But these days now, God is secondary. And may God deliver us in Jesus' name. It's time to repent. Say, it's time to repent. So what is repentance? I'm not going to define it. I'm just going to tell us what it entails. Because people have misinterpreted that word. The meaning of the word. It means, after thought of one's action, repentance. It consists of these things. It means, after thought of one's action, you have done something. And then it now dawns on you that you have done wrong. You now discover that, ah, the way I talked to that brother, the way I reacted to that sister, it was wrong. For the fact that you are able to get to that level, you now say, I am wrong, is repentance. Do not have no full repentance. You know, some people, they will do everything, and they will never accept that they are wrong. One celebrity in a country, he is always attacking government, always blaming them, always say, "Oh, the president is this, the uh, this one is that." This uh, is always. He himself was involved with the police, with the police. He was driving on a one way, and the policeman stopped him. He now came on here. I started saying uh, things about that. He harassed me. He, uh, 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 he was even threatening the uh, the uh, police. He said, "I will tell the governor." People was not telling. Are you not the always blaming the politicians? You are breaking the law, and they are telling you instead of you to say, "I'm sorry." But his ego was having a better hand. Repentance is you know that that thing you did, you are wrong. And I pray God will give us the grace to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. It means sorrow and regret for it. That thing that you have done wrong. It means sorrow and regret for it. It also means change of mind. Change of mind and decision to hate it and to seek for proper redress. Change of mind. And decision to hate it and seek for proper redress. If you want a perfect example of that, Luke 15, 17 to 19, the prodigal son. He wasted his father's, he did everything. But Bible says in that chapter 15, verse 17, he said he came to himself after thoughts. He, he had an afterthought. He now said, ah, ah, me. Me that used to be living in, in, in luxury. I'm now eating, sharing food with pigs. He started re reconciling. He had an afterthought about his action. He felt sorrow for it. And what did he do next? He decided he's going home. He repented. He changed his mind. When they say repent, they say change of mind. There is a definition that they've been given to repent, which is not accurate. It's incomplete. Some people will just tell you, oh, repent means change your mind. It's true. But that is not all. That kind of, there are three uh, words they use for repentance in the new, Old New Testament. I'm not going to tell us that. I didn't even write it in my notes because I thought it's not necessary. But the kind of repentance that, what's his name? Um, Judas had is what many people call repentance. That's not repentance. Praise the Lord. The repentance of Judas is not true repentance. 
That's just change of mind, but not change of heart. That kind of repentance is called change of mind, but not change of heart. You change, but you have not acknowledged that you are wrong. You have not seen the effects of what you have done, maybe it on you or people around you. You just discover that this thing is wrong. You now say, let me take this way. I'm not doing it again. But you have not acknowledged it. That's not repentance. Can we say amen? amen. Can we say amen? amen? Genuine repentance cannot be emotionally indifferent to sin. When you say, oh, I imagine, I, I, I did something to, who, who can I use example? You know, these two Solomons are sitting together now. Maybe I step on your toe. And I didn't even say, I just say, I'm sorry. And then, so what? I said, but I said sorry. How will, will you accept that from me? But I said sorry to you. So what else do you want me to do? Will you accept that from me? I would rather you don't say sorry and just go than to say sorry to God. I will take that sorry as an insult upon injury. A, a repentance that, ha, that is emotionally indifferent to sin. When you say you repent, you must, I mean, feel something that emotionally feel that you are wrong. You must feel that you are wrong. Not just say, oh, say some recital prayer. Uh, Father, we have sinned. We are not worthy to be called your son. Just somehow, 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 accept me. That's your own. Not to God. God, you must sorrow from the heart. I'm not saying you must cry every time. And may God help us in Jesus' name. We need to repent. We need to repent. We need to repent. If you want to go back to the beginning, you have to go back. You have to repent of what you have been doing now. And that is how you go to the beginning. In 2 Corinthians 10, 7, verse 10 and 11. 2 Corinthians Chapter 7, 10 to 11. But before I read, I want to say something. To be sorry for sin may not necessarily be equivalent for repentance. Because you are sorry for sin does not mean, oh, you have repented. But it is a powerful impulse to a genuine repentance. Because you cried, blah, 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 so that they can forgive you. Maybe they can let you go. It doesn't mean you have repented. You can still go and do it again. But that repentance, sorrowful repentance, can be an incentive to proper repentance. In 2 Corinthians 7.10, Bible tells, I'm not going to read that part, but the part I want to read is verse 10, 10 11. But verse 10 says, for godly sorrow worketh repentance. To salvation, not to be repented of. But sorrow of the world worketh death. Then verse 11, I want to read it from New Living Translation. Verse 11. He said, just see what this godly sorrow produce in you. Such earnestness, such concern to clear yourself, such indignation, such alarm, such longing to see me, so seal and such a readiness to punish the wrong, you show that you have done everything necessary to make it right. Repentance. It's not just, oh, I'm sorry, and that's it. No. He, say, he told them, he said, godly sorrow. He walked in repentance. He now told them, he said, when you repented, can't you see what happened to you? They were sorrowful. They were earnest. They were concerned. They, 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 they have hatred for what they did. They, they were alarmed. I mean, I did this to God. Ah, God, I'm sorry. And they were ready to correct the wrong way and do the right way. Church, we need to repent. We need to repent. Can we say we need to repent? In the program we went to, one man of God said something, which would be the best way to explain it about repentance. He said, for blood to atone, there must be repentance. For the blood to atone for sins, there must be repentance. He said, for repentance to take place, there must be humility. 
for repentance to take place, there must be humility. You know, let, can we just write down James 4, 9 to 10? True repentance must have some sorrow in it. It must have some soberness. Any repentance that does not have soberness, that is just anyhow, it's not God. I don't know why, why, why people are not reading the Bible again. In James 4, 9, it said, Be afflicted and mourn, weep. Let your laughter be turned to money and your joy to heaviness. Verse 10, it said, Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you. True repentance involves humility. For blood to atone, there must be repentance. And for repentance to take place, there must be humility. That's why 2 Chronicles 7, 14, he says, but my people that are called by my name shall do what? Shall humble themselves. You know, when you humble yourself, you, you, you lower your grade. You lower yourself. Pride will not, will prevent people from repenting. Pride will prevent people from repenting. So that's why you have to be humble. And that's why God said you resist the proud. You don't need to be bragging before we say you are proud. When you have problem with repenting, if you have problem saying I am sorry to people when you offend them, you know, some husbands cannot say sorry to their wife. Some wives cannot say sorry to their husband. Am I right? The way you are looking at me, am I right? Some, some, some couple, they cannot say sorry. Just to let matter die off. They say, no, I can't, I can't say sorry. I will think about it. When you have that problem, you know that you are proud. You know that you are proud. And God will deliver us in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want us to go back. I want us to repent. Like that prodigal son. So that new beginning can start. I want to tell us, I lie not. Can we say amen? amen. I want to tell us, and I lie not that this is a season that God wants to do a great thing. This is a season that God wants to answer prayer. I know that the world is in a mess, but this is a season for you to shine. This is a season for prayers to be answered. This is a season for prayers to be answered, and prayers will be answered in Jesus' name. Whether we like it or not, prayers will be answered. But I'm appealing to us, let us repent. Let us go back to the beginning. Let us go to the new beginning. Let us go because God said you should forget the former things. Neither consider the things of old. He said, look, behold, for I will do a new thing. And I pray in the name of Jesus, you will do it in your life in Jesus. You have failed the exam. Forget the former things. You will do it again and you will pass in Jesus' name. The immigration is disturbing you. That is the former things. You will apply again and they will answer you in Jesus' name. In this church, in this church, we've seen people who are told, go home, cancelled. They invite, that person got paper, permanent. She was almost in the process of going for citizenship. Something happened, and they cancelled everything. She had to start from minus zero. Today now, that person is a citizen. Do you have to choose whose report will you believe? Is it the Lord? Or what your lawyer is telling you. Lawyer tried. Everybody tried. But that sister refused to back up. She trusted God. And God helped her. We cannot say it more than we are saying it now. God is still at work. God is still answering prayer. It's just that his people are not humble. They are not humble. They have left the beginning. And they don't want to go there. And I pray in the name of Jesus, we'll go in Jesus' name. I say we will go in Jesus' name. This is a season of perfect jubilee. He said in the 70th year, he will visit you. And he will perform the word he has promised you. Maybe you are believing him for something. And you are thinking, maybe God is, maybe I didn't hear God well. I'm saying don't say that again. Because God will visit you. And he will perform that word in Jesus' name. If you believe me, say Amen. amen. Can we sing this song? I hope you know it. Choir, anyone that knows it, immediately I start singing it, you will run up and help me to complete it. Praise the Lord. 
this is a scenario of you sing a song, you know first line, second line, you don't know the third line. So the third line, be ready to get it. I have made you too small in my eyes. Oh, Lord. We don't know it. Forgive me. Okay. No, we have to sing that song by four. Can you, somebody let me Google it? You put it on the screen. I have believed in a lie instead of your love and your mercy. But now, oh Lord, I see my wrong in my life. God show you. In fact, he said, oh, can we stand up? He's already here. Who did this? Solely. Yeah? We. Okay, praise the Lord. We do we know it? But I go swing. But I go do it. Can you, can you play to it? Okay, let's, can we sing it together? Ah, uh, yeah, please, please. I want us to sing it from the heart. Oh. And I am, I'm, in fact, if you are not ready to repent, you can sit down. Let people who are ready to repent sing along. Ready, go. I have made you too small, leave my heart, oh Lord. Forgive me. I be, believe in a lie that you are unable to help me. But now, oh Lord, I say my wrong in my heart. And show yourself strong. And in my eyes, and with my soul, oh Lord, be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. Let's sing it from beginning again. Let it go. Uh, I have made you too small in my heart, oh Lord, forgive me, I have believed in a lie that you are unable to help me. But now, O oh Lord, I see my wrong in my heart. Lord, show yourself strong. I need my eyes and with my soul. O oh Lord, be magnified oh Lord be magnified be magnified be magnified oh Lord you are highly exalted you are highly Exalted, I need this nothing you can do. Oh, no, be me. Can you just talk to God now? Where have you missed it? Let's talk to God. Humble yourself for once. Just express. Don't care about the person standing next to you. You, you I mean, don't let pride stand against you today. Don't let strife tell you that oh, people will think, oh, why am I crying? Why am I doing this? Just talk to him. Talk to him. Don't mind that person because it is in returning that God will help. He said, in returning, in returning, you will find help. Let's return to the beginning. That prodigal son had to go back. Where have you missed the way? God is saying, I want to restore you and give you a new beginning. God wants to restore you, so, but you need to admit you are wrong. 
You have to admit for once that you are wrong. Can, can, bara, ba, 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 can you talk to him? Talk to him right now. Say, Father, where have you missed it? Maybe your marriage, in your spiritual work with God, where have you missed it? In your spirit, you used to pray. We used to know you as intercessor. But now you are not. You are not doing it. You are doing something else. We used to know you as man and woman of faith. But no longer anymore. You are just working on old Bible knowledge. You are not working on old Bible knowledge. I want you to go back to the beginning. Go back. Go back. That's your husband. That's your wife. You call sweetie. You call sugar. You call honey. But now he's something else. Well, you don't even call him anything anymore. Or call her anything. I want you to go back. Go back. Go back to the beginning. Say, Father, I am sorry. I have made you too small. There are things that God wants to do, but you have decided to believe the other report instead of God's report. I want you to repent today. This is a time, a season, a season of perfect jubilee. God is visiting, and he will visit you in the name of Jesus. He will visit you in the name of Jesus. He will visit your family. He will perform his word for you. In the name of Jesus, let's talk to him. Let's talk. Let's talk. If anybody is beside you making you feel up, move away from that person. Move from and talk to God. Be humble. Humble yourself before God today. Humble yourself. In the name of Jesus, humble yourself. Father, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. If no one joins me. If no one joins me, still I will follow. Still I will follow. If no one joins me, if no one joins me, see I will follow. If no one joins me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. No turning back. Can you now say, Father, I repent today. I am not going back to the, my whole ways. I am not going to forget the former things. Talk to him. Whatever represents former things in your life, say, Father, as from today, at your throne today, I decree, I am not going back. I am not going back. I am not going to go back to former things. I am not going to go back to old things. I am facing the new that you are showing. I am facing the new that you are showing. I am facing the new that you are showing. In the name of Jesus. I am facing the new that you are showing. In the name of Jesus. Talk to God. Talk to God. I am facing the new that you are showing. Thank you, Father, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Because of time, Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the word that the Lord has used, his, your prophet, Adeboye, to speak into our lives. That in the seventh year, that there will be perfect jubilee. I pray for everybody hearing me here online, that that jubilee, perfect jubilee, will happen in your life in Jesus' name. This jubilee is an all-round jubilee. Not just with sickness, everywhere. Spirit, soul, and body. I decree in the name of Jesus, it will happen for you in Jesus' name. A perfect one. A perfect new beginning. The Lord will give you in the name of Jesus. Things of old, they will become old in Jesus' name in your life. Things of old will be forgotten in your life in Jesus' name. When a woman gives birth, she's in pain. But immediately that baby lands, you see that same woman that was crying. She's not happy, joyful, I've forgotten about that pain. I send the name of Jesus that in this season, the joy that will make you to forget your pain, the Lord will give you in Jesus' name. The Lord will do a new thing. 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 You will never consider the hood again. 
you will not think of the road again. Your decision will not be based on the road again. It shall be the new as on today in Jesus' name. Your prayer life will change. Your study life will change. Your marital life will change. Your relationship life will change. Everything will be a new beginning. And that everything that you have lost as a result of what you have been doing, I say because of the word for this season, that shall be full restoration to you in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We pray that in this house, prayer will be answered. Prayers will be answered. Every prayer request that is brought, that shall be answered in Jesus. I pray that all the people hearing my voice, under the sound of my voice, that that prayer point in your life that is still hanging before December, you will give testimony over them in Jesus' name. You will give testimony over them in Jesus' name. We shall be hearing of children being born in Jesus' name. We shall be hearing of immigration doors being opened in Jesus. We shall be hearing of promotion at work in Jesus. We shall be hearing of business being expanding in the name of Jesus. We shall be hearing of marriages in the name of Jesus. We shall be hearing of good news in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. He said, let God be true, and every man be a liar. I say we believe you, Lord. We believe you, Lord. We as a church, we are going back to the beginning. We are going to that beginning you started with us, and we will never leave it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. The Lord, okay, sorry. Please, just before we round up, uh, I just want to welcome some people.